Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and this month I'll be covering sequencing in Reactor. In this first video I'll show you two different setups. One that runs alongside the MIDI clock and another that can be triggered to run with incoming MIDI notes to use as a modulator. If you guys like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really would appreciate it. Okay, so let's get started. In the sequencing menu, we have a few different options available to us. And the top four are all basically the same. They only differ in the number of steps that they have. I don't really like these very much. They're a little clunky to use, in my opinion. Um, we have a clock input that whenever the audio stream going into the clock input crosses the zero line, uh, the sequencer goes to the next step. And I just find this to be kind of weird to use. I really much prefer the other available sequencer, which is called the Multiplex 16. And I like this module a lot more. It gives us a simple position input. We can just declare a value from 0 to 15 and get the appropriate output from our sequencer. And this just makes a lot more sense to me than the audio clock input of the other sequencers. In addition, we get a length control that allows us to easily and dynamically change the length of the sequence. So setting this up, is fairly easy for the most part. We'll just create a knob for all of the inputs and I'm gonna create a numeric readout so we can look at what value is being output from the sequencer. And in order to get that to work right I'm gonna change this sequencer to be monophonic but that's really not necessary um, for any reason other than the numeric readout. You can also make this same structure be polyphonic with no problems. So the only thing left to do now is to supply our module with a position input. In order to do this, I'm going to use a MIDI in module called Song Position. And what this does is it counts in 96th notes the position in the song and whenever the MIDI clock is running. So if we run the song position directly into the multiplexer here, we're going to have the sequence step forward every 96th note, which is just too fast. So let's divide down our song position using the modulo module. What the div division output here does is it divides A by B and then rounds down. So we'll use the div output to eventually control the position of our multiplexer. Next up, we just need to determine the B input of our modulo. And in order to do this, I'm going to divide 96 by a value that will determine the speed of our sequencer. And we'll store these in a list named speed. So if we want to change the sequence every bar, we can divide the 96th notes by 96, which is equal to 96 over 1. If we want to do half bars, we want to have 48, which is 96 over 2. If we want quarter bars, um, we want to take 96 and divide it by 4, and etc., etc. So, for example, if we have our speed list set to one bar, then the div output of our modulo device is going to tell you how many bars have passed since. Um, the MIDI clock began running. And we're almost done with this first setup here. The only thing we need to really do is to insert a step filter module in between the modulo and the multiplex. And what the step filter does is it stops events that are identical to the previously received event from being sent to the output. And this is useful because, um, for example, if our speed list is set to one bar, then we're going to get the same value coming out of our modulo device 96 times in a row. And we don't want to read out the output of our sequencer every 96th note. We only want to do it when the value has changed. So the step filter is just going to filter out any identical events that happen. And this is really useful. 
Um, reading out the extra events might not cause you problems later on down the line, but it might. And just having this coded cleanly in the first place is definitely an easier way to go about things than trying to troubleshoot your problems later on down the line. I find that using knobs for our inputs here for the multiplexer is a little tedious in a way. Um, they just take up so much space and um, I'm just not really very fond of it as a control setup in the first place. And in a future video, I'll show you how to replace these knobs with something a little more innovative and user-friendly. But for now, we're stuck with these. And I just want to make sure everything works. So I'm going to set some of our early knobs here to some values and then start our MIDI clock to make sure that everything's running all right. All right, so with the BPM set to 120 and the speed set to a half bar, each part of the sequence should stay for one second, which appears to be working just fine. All right, so let's create the second setup I wanted to make for today. I'll start by duplicating the first one and getting rid of the position controls, everything besides the speed list. And this time around, I want to create controls that are going to restart our sequence at the beginning of a MIDI note press and then um, go from there. And so this is a good setup for when you want to use a sequencer to modulate a parameter in a synth or something like that. And in order to run this, I'm going to use a tempo info module in conjunction with our speed list. And the tempo info module outputs a value that is the beats per minute in hertz as a frequency value. So a beat is a quarter of a bar. So if we want our tempo info to tell us the frequency of a quarter bar, um, we can simply multiply it by one. If we want to look at an eighth of a bar, um, that's twice as fast, so we want to multiply the frequency by two. If it's sixteenth notes, it's four times as fast, etc., etc. So all of these values relate to um, how far away they are from a quarter note. So that's the frequency uh, that we want to be increasing the value of our position in our sequencer module. So now we have our clock oscillator. It's going to output a value of 1 at that frequency. And we want to make sure we're only taking the values of 1 coming out of the clock oscillator, which also outputs zeros from time to time. And we'll use the 1s to um, increase a counter. So it's going to count um, whatever speed denomination we've chosen from the speed list. And last but not least, we want to restart this counter whenever we get a new MIDI gate. So um, this gate wants to do a few things, actually. We want to control the sync and the amplitude of our clock oscillator. And we also want to reset the um, counter to zero on a new gate. All right, so in this video, I showed you two different setups for the multiplexer module. In future videos, I'll show you how we can use the sequencers to control parameters, how we can use them to modulate parameters. Um, how to improve the graphic user interface, and hopefully some other stuff if we have time as well. Uh, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Thanks for watching.